is the heart of the dream is a real experience that takes place in another reality. This especially applies to our psychic and spiritual dreams. All dreams take place in another reality. Uh, they do draw up um, material from the subconscious and from the churn of our thoughts and emotions throughout the day, but they do take place in another reality. And uh, for dreams that are uh, deeply meaningful on a spiritual level or help us go through a crisis, uh, this is the heart of the dream. And the experience takes place in another reality where we are likely to see something, experience something, or commune with a presence or a being or even a dead loved one that brings things into a powerful focus or um, realization that we can't get any other way. And in fact, the ancients really understood the power of dreams, that they are a bridge between our reality and literally the land of the gods. Plato called them the between state and said that dreams are, are a place that we go. We don't have dreams, we go to dreams or something uh, takes us to the dreaming environment where we have these experiences which are either very difficult in waking consciousness or even impossible. That's as good a segue as I can think of because the next thing I wanted to ask you about um, was kind of two-pronged, which is one is the out-of-body experience where we do astral travel or we move away from our physical body during sleep, but also, I, I think before we go to that, how do dreams compare to near-death experiences? Because in the near-death experience, we are leaving the body, supposedly, and moving towards light. How do those compare? And also, say, hallucinogenic experiences where one is outside of their body. Are these similar? Are they dissimilar? They're, they have quite a few similarities and share a lot of common traits. Uh, in a sense, we're out of body whenever we dream, although sometimes we have a very dramatic sense of being out of the body, or we can even feel ourselves projected out of the body while we are dreaming. and and. We have an awareness that this is happening in a dream state. We're lucid. We know we're dreaming while we're dreaming. Uh, there are certain kinds of dreams, for example, um, dream visits from the dead that have a lot of similarities to near-death experiences. Now, these are dreams where we've lost a loved one, and of course, when you lose a loved one, you're grieving. You often wish for a reunion. You know, one last time, you'd like to know that person is all right. And many people have real experience dreams where they are in another environment, they feel themselves in an, go to another environment or be projected to another environment outside of reality that is this bridge world where they can have a real reunion. And the reunions uh, have all the effects of being physically real. The dead person can be touched, there's communication, usually it's telepathic however, not verbal. Uh, they often appear very uh, radiant and refreshed, especially if they've been ill. And the, pers the person awakens from these experiences um, feeling like they've had a real meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's so confusing to them because how could that be? The person has passed on. Mm -hmm. It's possible in the dream world. Then there are other kinds of dreams where, as I mentioned earlier, during that early stage of sleep, you can train yourself to not completely fall asleep but literally project your consciousness out of the body and go traveling in the astral plane or visit distant places on Earth. I taught myself how to do that when I was in high school. And while I'm not a regular uh, out-of-body projector, like some, some people can do it very fluidly and easily, uh, I have done it enough to know that it is quite a real experience. You can visit distant places, observe them, come back, and uh, validate the accuracy of, of what you have seen and visited. And uh, one of the greatest uh, travelers like that was Robert Monroe. He was an American broadcaster who began having spontaneous out-of-body experiences, uh, getting projected into this lucid dream state while he was falling asleep. And as he paid more attention to it, he began to realize that there were certain um, characteristics that seemed to enhance his ability to do that. So he developed techniques for uh, going out of body and he did quite a bit of astral traveling, wrote three books where he was literally mapping the afterlife and the dream world. And he said that, that um, there, he, he divided them into locales. 
and uh, that the locale closest to us uh, concerned our daily dreams and um, concerns. And the further out we went, we're getting into more of these transpersonal areas. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, it, it was like a vast ocean, like looking into eternity, that there were even regions that were incomprehensible incompre to us and that perhaps we hadn't even explored. In the book, you mentioned that you spent time at his Monroe Institute. I did, yes. Uh, it's in Virginia, and uh, they have various programs for training you to extend your consciousness. And they're not programs that like guarantee you to have quote-unquote out-of-body experiences where you feel yourself projected out of the body, although that does happen. But to expand your consciousness to uh, more refined levels where you can perceive these alternate realities. So you are literally projecting your consciousness like a dream uh, would project your consciousness to the afterlife, to the spiritual realm, to uh, higher realms where uh, unknown uh, beings exist, and even the presence of God. Uh, so I took their beginning program. It's a week-long program. And it's a total immersion uh, experience. It was wonderful. They take away your watch, your cell phone. Uh, you're not to have any sense of time because mm -hmm. you are uh, trying to dis disrupt your normal rhythm to free the bounds of consciousness. You're beyond time. Exactly. So we might have sessions late at night uh, or throughout the day. And we would get together as a group and have uh, some tutorial lessons. Then we would retire to our rooms where each of us had like a... Uh, a bunk bed with curtains and headphones. And uh, we would uh, ha receive instruction for projecting our consciousness into these other realities. Now, what was played over the headphones was music, so sort of like meditation music, but it was embedded with Hemisync, which was yes. Monroe's patented uh, technology, um, including- Which sounds like binaural beats or something. It was, and, and it is. It's binaural beats that balance the right and left hemisphere of the brain. And when the two hemispheres are balanced, it's uh, believed to be much easier to project yourself out of body. It was an absolutely phenomenal week.